Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to the last show. This is it. This is the... Ah, what do you want to call it? The Let's call it the electrifying conclusion of the course. I think that sounds like an exciting name. It's very exciting. It's electrifying. And it is the conclusion. Things are coming to an end here today in class number 195. This is it. This is the last portion of the very last class. So I want to thank you very much for listening for paying attention, for studying, for working hard through all this. As I know you have, it's been a tremendous effort. But we do have a few things to do today, including our review. And speaking of the word hard, that's a word we're going to talk about. Difficult as hard, hard. Uh, to say something is hard, it's it's been a hard course. It hasn't been easy. It's been a bit difficult. It's been a bit hard. So we use them, uh, we use hard as a synonym for difficult. Was this course harder than you thought? Maybe. Yeah, Kyla was a bit harder than I thought. Maybe it was harder than you thought. I, th I think it was harder for me. It was hard as well. Well, it has been hard. It's coming to an end now, but it, it, it's been a hard course. It's been, it's been difficult for me. Uh, every day to come here. Well, not to, not that it's difficult to come here every day, but it's been a long course. It's been a lot of classes. 585 segments. 585 cl classes. Okay, 195 classes for each level, but for three levels, it's 585. So it's been a lot of work. And, uh, well, I don't think I would say it's been really hard, but it's been... Uh, it's certainly been a challenge for me. So if, you, if we say something is difficult, we can also say it's hard. Something is hard to do. I think Chinese is much harder to learn than English. I think there are a lot of languages that are much harder to learn than English. So to a certain extent, you're lucky that English, I, I think, is not, it's not that hard. But it does require hard work. It requires a good effort. And if you've studied, if you've practiced, if you've worked along with me here on the radio and following the classes with us on TV, then I'm sure you've made um, very significant improvements to your English over the last year. Uh, now, the other thing we saw yesterday, the, the indirect form. So indirect forms, and this is something that even very, very high-level students have problems with, have trouble with occasionally. Um, and the word order, how the word order changes when we switch from a direct to an indirect form. So let me ask you some questions, and I want you to say, I don't know. So, for example, where did you leave the report? I don't know where I left the report. So in the question, we have the auxiliary verb. Where did you leave the report in the past? Where did you leave it? I don't know where I left it. Okay. What was the problem with the computer system? You can say, I don't know what the problem with the computer system was. Right? With the verb to be at the end. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know what the problem with the computer system was. It seems very long, the problem with the computer system. But with respect to the verb to be, the movement is always the same. It could be, who is your, do you know who my brother is? I don't know who your brother is. I don't know who the first man to walk on the moon was. It could be my brother, or we could be talking about the first man to walk on the moon. But with respect to the verb to be, the movement is always the same. So here the verb to be is going to appear at the end. right? I don't know what the problem with the computer system was. Why didn't she put the car in reverse? I don't know why she didn't put the car in reverse. What did her mother say when she got home? I don't know what her mother said when she got home. Where did they go after leaving the concert? I don't know where they went after leaving the concert. Why did he hard-boil the eggs? He knows I don't like hard-boiled eggs. Why did he hard-boil them? So to boil in the water. 
the water that is boiling, to put them in the boiling water, to boil the eggs. Why did he hard boil them? <clears throat> do you like do you like hard boiled eggs? Hard boiled. So you put you put them in the water until the until the egg is duro, you know, huevo duro. Yeah. I don't know why he hard boiled the eggs. Why wasn't the project phased in over the year? I don't know why the project wasn't phased in over the year. So introducir en fases, to phase in. I don't know why the project wasn't phased in over the year. Hmm. Uh, who, who asked the boss for permission? I don't know who asked the boss for permission. So here there's no change in word order because who is, is our subject? Who represents the subject in the answer? We're asking for the subject. Who asked the boss for permission? I don't know who asked the boss for permission. What did she tell the visitors? I don't know what she told the visitors. Why did the car break down for the second time? In both out, though. Come on. I don't know why the car broke down for the second time. Where did I leave my phone? Where? Where did I leave my phone? I don't know where you left your phone, Kyle. I don't know. Expression of the day. Ah, oh, yes, it is time for our expression of the day. That's right, it's time for our, the expression of the day, our very last expression of the day. And our expression today is to learn by heart. To learn something by heart. Heart, H-E-A-R-T. Now, if you learn something by heart, you memorize it. To memorize something, to learn by heart. And I have never been a big supporter of memorization. I've never been the type of teacher that tells my students, memorize this and all these things. There are many things that have to be memorized, of course. Verb conjugations and all these things, phrasal verbs, certain things that require memorization. But understanding how things work and having things just come come naturally through practice i think is much better than simply memorizing so many people memorize go went gone cut 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 da, da, da. And then when they have they have these tables in their heads and then when they have to conjugate the verbs they revert back to this table essentially and there's a delay they're searching for the answer and they find it and then they apply it but it there's always a delay. And I find that it's it's much better to learn through speaking, through repeating. And, and the Vaughn method is so good for that because it forces you to, okay, we're going to practice a certain structure, and here are 50 examples, repeating, drilling it, machacando, over and over and over and over and over until it comes natural. So you're not reverting to these tables in your head. We want it to be like a, like we say, a knee-jerk reaction. When you tap your knee and, and your leg kicks forward, it's a reaction. When you're put in a certain situation, when you're asked a certain style of question, we want you to come back with the right grammar structure automatically because you've practiced it so many times, it just comes naturally. So to learn something by heart, yes, you have to learn by heart. Sure you do. But learning through tables is not something I... This is what I should say. Learning through memorizing tables of verbs and things like that that style i think is i i think is really not as good i think i think you want you want to practice by applying the grammar in use in sentences in questions asking the questions answering the questions over and over and over until it comes natural and that's what we've done in this course i think ask me this ask me this over and over and over answering and asking questions and actually applying the grammar so that the structures hopefully come natural but yes, our expression of the day, to learn by heart, by heart, to entirely memorize something, to learn something by heart. Now, as we move into the new material for class number 195, our very last class, what we see here is, uh, well, there's a section here where basically the teacher is going to test you, and that's me. I'm going to test you with a number of things, and let's start. Why don't we start off with a little bit of translation? It's been a while, so let's take a look at some translation. Translation. All right, yes, it's time for a little bit of translation. All right, it's been a while since we've done this. Nice to hear that little jingle again. 
Uh, algo está fallando aquí. How do you say that in English? Something's wrong here. Very good. Something's wrong. We're using the contraction, something is, but something's wrong here. All right. Mientras tanto, ¿por qué no comes algo? In the meantime, in the meantime, why don't you get something to eat? Why don't you get something to eat? In the meantime, why don't you get something to eat? Si no entiendes una palabra, sáltatela. If you don't understand a word, skip it. If you don't understand a word, skip it. All right. Fui rechazado por razones de salud. Ooh, rechazado. ¿Cómo era? Phrasal verb, ladies and gentlemen. Phrasal verb. I was turned down. Very good. If you got that right, give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. I was turned down por razones de salud. I was turned down for health reasons. Yes. I was turned down for health reasons. Okay. Th these were from list number 53. Let's try another one here. Let me flip away here in my book. Ah, yes. This is straight out of the book here. ¿Cómo es el tiempo en Canadá en verano? I can answer that question. What's the weather like in Canada in the summer? In the summer, right, with the article. What's the weather in Canada like in the summer? Ah, very good. Well, it's good. It depends on the region, of course, but Canada has beautiful summers. I recommend you go there sometime in the summer. It's very, very beautiful. Canadian summers are fantastic. Yes. So there you go. We've just seen five sentences of translation. And that's kind of an indication of the translation, the level that you'll see on your test. Remember, your test coming up, you'll get an email. You'll get, you'll, you'll, you will be informed about the dates and times and the details of the test. But translation like that, translation suitable to the level, similar to the, the difficulty that you've seen in your book, will be the style of translation that will appear on your test. All right? Um, let me just ask you a few random questions here. Would you rather have a motorcycle or a scooter? Como? Yeah, maybe you weren't expecting that. Would you rather have a motorcycle or a scooter? Oh, I'd rather have a motorcycle. Would you rather live in an igloo or a mansion? I'd rather live in a mansion. Would you rather be a drummer or a guitarist? I'd rather be a guitarist, maybe. I, I think I'd rather be a drummer. I, I play the drums a bit and I enjoy it, Yeah. Would you rather have a kilogram of gold or a kilogram of diamonds? Huh, I'd rather have a kilogram of diamonds. Now, why? Why would you rather have a kilogram of diamonds? How do you say, porque vale más? Remember this one? Because, ah, uh, very good, because it's worth more. Not it's more worthy, ni nada así, no, no. It's worth more. To be worth. Remember, we saw this. Remember this? To be worth. Gold, or diamonds are worth more than gold. So I would rather have a kilogram of diamonds than a kilogram of gold because diamonds are worth more, right? All right, yes. Okay, well, we, there are lots of questions I could ask you, but we're going to run out of time, and I want to move on because I want to take a look. We still have some vocabulary, so let's take a look at our vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the vocabulary of the day. Our very last, our final five words of vocabulary for the whole course. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Mentir. Mentir. But this is, I'm not doing this now. I'm not lying. To lie or to, everyone knows lie, but what else? Fib. F-I-B. It's like a little lie. A fib. The verb to fib. Mentiroso. Fibber. If someone fibs, they're a fibber. F-I-B-B-E-R. Gafar. Gafar. To jinx. J-I-N-X. He jinxed me. I was going for the, the final shot in, in the basketball, and he jinxed me. J-I-N-X. Y gafe. 
is, of course, a jinx, J-I-N-X. So the verb to jinx, gafar to jinx, and gafe, jinx. Hilo dental, wow, our last word. Very random, isn't it? Very. These words have always been very random. Hilo dental. Dental floss. Now, we don't say dental thread, no. Dental floss, F-L-O-S-S. Dental floss, dental floss. And we have the verb to floss. My dentist always tells me I should floss my teeth more often. He says, Kyle, make sure you floss your teeth every day. And I don't. I should, but I don't floss my teeth every day. I have dental floss in my house. And I floss occasionally, but I don't floss every day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have two minutes left. So I'm going to start to wind down the program. But I want to thank you so much for listening, for joining me for all of these shows. It's been... 195 shows, but now in each show I did three levels, so it was really 20-minute programs. I I have done 585 20-minute programs. So I want to thank you very much for listening. I want to thank uh, the guys here in the studio who helped me, primarily Nacho, our, our, our technician here who has who edited, I would say, almost every single program. So it's been a huge challenge for him, just like it has been for me. And um, our other technicians, first there was Iker, who was responsible for a lot of the sounds you heard, a lot of the uh, the, the jingles, the rafagas. Uh, Iker came up with a lot of those. Also, another technician here, Manu, who has helped me a lot with the recordings as well. They're fantastic people, and they do a great job um, with everything here at the radio, so I want to thank those guys for all their hard work. Also, of course, a big thank you to... Uh, to uh, Richard Brown, David Waddell, Carmen Vallejo for designing the course, writing the material. It's a fantastic course, and I think uh, so many people have learned so much from it because it is very, very well designed. Obviously, Richard Vaughn for giving me the opportunity to be involved with this, and Alberto and all the people here uh, at the radio and involved with the TV. It's been a major, major um a uh, major project for us, and I think it's been a, a tremendous success, and the feedback from the students has been great. So thank you very much for working so hard and making it a success. But remember, the learning process now doesn't end. You've finished the advanced portion, but there's still a lot to learn, so keep listening, keep studying, keep practicing, and make English a part of your lifestyle so that learning, you can keep improving your English by surrounding yourself in English because you enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoy the language now, so keep exposing yourself, and please keep listening. I encourage you to keep listening. I'm going to start a new show, hopefully quite soon, here on Vaughn Radio. I hope that you'll uh, check out my new show coming up soon, and I still have my my uh, previous show, The Verb Circus, which, uh, which, which airs here. I hope that you can uh, check that show out, and if you have any questions, comments, feedback, you can always send me an email directly, k. Miller, K-M-I-L-L-A-R, como millar, K-M-I-L-L-A-R, at grupobaugan.com. You can send me an email if you want to, if you have any comments about the show um, or anything moving forward with the radio or television in the future. Thank you very much for listening. It's been a pleasure. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've done a great job. I'm completely out of time, but thank you so much again, and take care. All the best. Bye-bye.